The 1960 Plymouth Police Emergency Wagon by Johan coming up next on Monster Hobby's Model Car Garage. One Adam Seven, One Adam Seven, look out for a suspect carrying a concealed vintage Johan model kit. That's right, fans, today we are going to check out this amazing chunk of plastic. This, of course, is a 1960 Johan Plymouth Emergency Wagon on loan for this review from my good friend John. So, thank you, John. I have one of these that's built up, which we're going to take a look at. Well, it's it's been built up, it's been rebuilt, it's now in a state of work in progress. So we're going to check that one out after the video, so stay tuned for that. You don't want to miss it! <laughs> anyway, in the meantime, before we open up the lid on this, let's just do the customary things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. Check us out on our online store where you can buy our current model kits. There's some real groovy ones there. www.monster-hobbies.ca We ship internationally. That includes countries that are not Canada. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, let's take the lid off this great kit and see what's in the box. One Adam 7, One Adam 7. We're going back to the 60s and here we have the Johan police emergency wagon. This was always an awesome looking box art. I just love uh, Johan's action scenes on all their uh, police and service vehicles. Always had a great cartoon. You can see the two policemen in here at the siren blazing and the cars zipping by ready to go out to the emergency. Really awesome work. On the side here we get these nice authentically detailed police equipment. So this is what you get in the kit. A communications antenna, a siren, flashing dome light, push bar with frame attachment, spotlights, a radio unit with hand microphone, seat belts, aerials, side mirrors, and a rear view mirror. And if we carefully turn this up this way, of course the end of the box is much the same as the top. And then here we go on the sides. It says look for these other great Johan kits. The Police Pursuit Car, which I have one of these, built. <laughs> Challenger Funny Car, Javelin AMX Pro Stock, Comet Pro Stock, Barracuda Pro Stock, Maverick Pro Stock, Pinto Funny Car, The Heavenly Hearse, which I have, I've reviewed that one. The Fire Rescue Ambulance, I've built this one. Mustang Funny Car, The Tornado, which is coming up in our series. Hornet Funny Car, The El Dorado, The Cutlass Funny Car, and The Torino NASCAR Racer. Lots of cool stuff from old Johan. Oops, make a sound effect there. <laughs> but unfortunately, of course, Johan has been out of business. But a friend of mine, John, loaned me these kits just to review, which is really nice because I have built this in the past. Took it apart, started to redo it, and I've got an example kind of halfway through somewhere, which I'll show you a little later in the video. So without further ado, let's pull off the lid on this old beauty. Now John was telling me that he bought this kit way back in the 90s. And uh, luckily for us, he never did anything with it. So that's always good. Here we have our instruction sheet. A little fold out. And of course it's front and back. Very typical of the era. Set that to the side. We've got our decal sheet, and this is actually silk screened onto one solid piece of decal film. And then you just cut it out very carefully. And then we've got our car body here, molded in this nice kind of butternut yellow. And this kit originally was a promotional vehicle from Johan. So what they did is they sunk a couple little holes in there underneath so that you drill them out and then you can put in all that police detail. So you could build this as stock as well if you didn't like the police options. We've got the windows and unfortunately over time they got cracked but luckily for us they didn't get cracked right down the front or on the sides so it's still workable. We've got our interior bucket here which is very shallow which is almost like a, a slot car you know in a lot of ways. 
But look at this side here, it's all deep, 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 and lumpy and whatever. Anyway, there's our underframe. As you can see, it's a promotional style. One flat pan with pretty much everything in it. And a long shaft here for mounting the battery on, which we'll see later. We've got the Johan Chrome. And unfortunately, there is a lot of flash into this model. But uh, the Chrome's actually not too flashy, so that's always good. But this is flashy. <laughs> A firewall and the big thick plastic axles. Oops, there's our battery there. Our engine and components and again look at the flash. There's our hood and part of the engine. As you can see the engine's pretty simplified. Then we have our nice police whoops, dome lights and the rear tail lamps. And then we've got our tires, and that basically is our kit, just the unboxing. So let me clear all this out of the way, and we'll take a look at those instructions. And here we are once again, back to take a look at our instructions. And what we have here is, of course, it says Police Emergency Wagon, this old Johan kit. Uh, the instructions are very much 1960s. And as you can see, you've got a right and left hand side of your engine block, your fan belt, and alternator, early years of alternator actually, the pulley assembly, the fan, your valve covers, your exhaust manifolds, the intake manifold, and the air cleaner. There is no carburetor on this, so if you ever wanted to like super detail this motor you'll have to find a carburetor. Here we have our torsion bars as they show them going in, and they have the big heads here for that big thick plastic axle it goes through. Then down here on our chassis assembly, it's just basically the wheel covers, the rubber tire, the wheel back, and the axles. Uh, axle locator blocks, which go in here. Then we have this nice little radio. So we got our radio and control switches here. The control panel with the speaker in it, the microphone cord and your microphone. Our steering wheel, our gear shift and tachometer assembly, which goes through that rod there. The instrument panel, the rear view mirror, radio shown mounted on the floorboards and our two seat belts. It says interior paint tan or gloss black, paint bottom of interior flat black. So we do have some paint details and call outs. Buckles may be painted silver on your seat belts, you know, all this kind of stuff. So we'll just turn this over here, taking a look at our back section. It shows our flasher dome going in here and some little lamps. These are all chrome plated, so on the lamps... Oh no wait, the dome is clear red, so it'll... when this goes together these will look like red flashers. There's our push bar going in and our siren, which you mount on the hood. Well, on the front fender here actually. There's our hood going together, the radiator, and our nice grill and bumper assembly, as well as the antenna. This is a fairly simplistic kit if you can find one, and won't cost you too much nowadays. But as you can see, it goes together easily, so if you're a younger builder, this won't be a problem at all. A firewall, a windshield washer jar. This is a... Uh, says it should be left white, but ours is molded in that yellow color, so you'll have to paint that, of course. Lock washers underneath to lock the window up in there. There's our interior going together, the tail lights on the back and the rear bumper. And then our battery going on that post and everything going together and being hooked together with these little plastic chassis pins. Painting and decals. It says front side doors and tailgate may be masked off and the body and hood painted gloss black. Inside of the hood and engine compartment may be painted flat black. Center police de decal on tailgate and star decal to side doors as shown on box. So very easy to build. Now let's take a look at our actual plastic components. And here we have our body for our 1960 Plymouth Wagon, our police cruiser. Very nice. <laughs> and it is nicely done for the vintage. Keep in mind that this was a promo kit, and they would have cut the hood open and added some bits into the mold just to make this, uh, you know, have an opening hood and whatnot. That was kind of the common practice back in the day for model kits. Uh, lots of nice detail here. It does look like a 1960 Plymouth wagon, which is always nice. You can see the uh, four doors and the door handles here. The nice uh, Plymouth emblem along the side. Here, let's just... can I get up in there? 
There you go. You can see the nice details. So this this kit, imagine back in the day you would paint all the chrome with a brush and all that. Maybe some of you still are. Now you can easily lay this out with a long strip of bare metal foil, rub it in there and make it look nice. Tail lamps, I do believe, are chrome. I have to take a look at a Plymouth here from the 60s. You can see the nice detail on here. Johan really had uh, a lot of crisp detail. Unfortunately though ours suffers from flash, so I do believe this kit might have been a later Seville. Seville Enterprises, not a pure Johan, but still. Well I guess it's still pure Johan. There is some flash along here. Nice detail with a little uh, grill along the uh, B pillar here, or C pillar even. Yeah, so very nice. You've got your vents in here too with your windshield wipers. And then a lot of open detail on the front, on that rad support, it's pretty smooth. And like I said at the earlier in the video here, you do have little holes on the inside along the door panels. There's one here into the pillars. So you drill holes through those and then you can mount all your police lights and everything. There are a couple of little sink marks in here. I don't know how detailed you want to get with the kit or just leave it as, you know, this is a police car. You could always get rid of these posts and all that kind of stuff, you know, if you really want to get fancy. However, for what we have here, I think it's pretty well good enough. Now, I don't usually do the glass right away on our video reviews here, but I thought I'd kind of switch it up a little bit. This is very simplistic. It's just a one piece, which again is a 60s style, right? You got the little bridges in between your front windshield and your side panels here, and of course the holes. For those little mounting pegs. Uh, unfortunately, like I said, this one did get cracked, but luckily it's not down the glass, which is a real pain. But as you can see, even for the vintage, I mean, this is pretty clear and crisp. And like I said, very simple. There are these little tabs here, which will lock into our interior panel, which we will be showing next. And here we have our interior tub. And, you know, for the effort of this being a tub, it is pretty well detailed, even though it, you know, could have benefited from being a little bit deeper. There are some little sink marks in here in the corners on the floor panels. There's some nice little panel detail in here on the back seat, which, of course, the back seat faced backward out of the car. And I do suppose in the real Plymouth wagon this would be removable, so you could get up into there. The back seat would probably fold, so you've got that long cargo area. Have any of you actually owned a 60 Plymouth wagon? If so, write so in the comments and let us know how you enjoyed it and, you know, if these actually pulled out and folded down, which I can't see why they wouldn't. Anyway, on our door panels, there is a good effort to put in the armrests and the window cranks and everything else, but like I say, these are kind of suggested. <laughs> You know, in the mold process, I mean, you're not getting anything highly detailed like this on your door handles, which you would get if this had the separate side molded panels. But keep in mind the vintage of this kit, and that originally would have been a, a dealer promo back in the day. There's some nice texture on here. You can paint them, you know, flat black and then silver in here. Uh, look on the internet for a lot of references for the 60 Plymouth Wagon. This is the 60-40 split bench seat. Uh, so this would have folded down or something to that effect. Actually, maybe it would have. I'm not sure. <laughs> Underneath, though, you can see just all these different reliefs in here. It's very different for uh, that kind of, you know, one-piece tub. However, I mean, easy to build, quick to build, quick to paint. And finally, we get our chassis assembly, which again is very simplistic. It's just a one-piece mold here. I'm showing it from the top. There is a bit of flash in here. These are our holes for our mounting pegs and the post for our battery to sit on. And then here we have these big holes. So there are little plates in the kit that allow you to uh, put in the proper axle locators. If we turn it upside down here, you can see the nice underside detail. This, of course, again, is simplistic to paint. You could just blast this all flat black and you're on to your next step. Painting your mufflers and exhaust pipes here with the silver. I always kind of don't like painting these because you have to get so far down with the brush in here. 
but still you can see the full perimeter frame and the gigantic leaf springs in here the big uh, rear axle i'm not sure if they had danas back in 60. i know that that was more of a muscle car thing so if you guys know the type of rear axle in here write it in the comments down below of course we got our fuel tank in here fuel cell with the uh, little straps you could of course you could use bare metal foil in here paint this thing steel again look up your plymouth references it does have the date or sorry the johan in here as well as the place of manufacturer and licensed by chrysler corp again very basic very simplistic but should look good you do have a bit of the transmission in here with the bracket so very nice very simple very promotional so now let's take a look at our smaller components in here. Now here we have our plastic components, and usually I don't put in the taillights in the dome or the windshield glass into, you know, this early in our video review, but there's not much of it, so I might as well put it in here instead of making it something very special. So anyway, there's our radiator with a little bit of a support on it. There's some nice texture in here. Uh, there's our belts. And you got power steering on one side, and then your alternator would go on the other. And then we have our intake manifold with parts of the cylinder heads molded in place, as well as the distributor. There's our valve covers, our exhaust pipes, very basic. Our hood, which has Plymouth molded on it. We'll see that in a minute. And then we have those locking pins for the windows. Those are those little pegs for, you know, putting the body together. A little windshield washer bag here. There's the torsion bars, the axle locator blocks, the steering wheel with the turn signals and horn stuff in there, the wheel backs, our dashboard, which is very nice but has a lot of flash, our Chrysler engine block, the axles, rad support, and our seatbelts, which doesn't look like this one got fully formed. Well, we'll, we'll take a look at it in a sec here. Then our battery, and there's our little bubblegum red dome, and our rear tail lights. Now, unfortunately, this is all the plastic that's in the kit. So, oh, with the exception of the chrome, which we'll take a look at in a minute. But there's two major things missing here, and I don't know if they were ever in a kit. So, in my old one, it wasn't there, and in this one, they're not there either. And guess what it is? See if you can figure it out. I'll give you a second. Okay, have you got it figured out? So what we have missing is, of course, our police radio and the push bar with the frame attachment, which is very unfortunate because that would really make this kit stand out. So have you ever, like, built this and had those two pieces in there? Because I've got two kits here that never had it. So if so, let me know in the descriptions below. And then next up is our chrome. And here we have my favorite component of all these model kits, which of course is the chrome, because as we know, everything in the future is chrome, <laughs> according to SpongeBob. Anyway, there's our grill. And this is a really good representation of a 1960 Plymouth grill. I've looked this up on the internet, so you need a little bit of black wash in here. And you need to carefully get it up in between these headlights to finish this off. And then the Plymouth symbol had gold in there, so it would pop out against your flat black, your detail wash. There's your air cleaner. Now, it's sort of not really... Uh, I'm not really sure if these were chrome or if they were black. You know, sometimes Johan would put a bunch of stuff on the chrome tree and just, you know, jazz it up with some chrome. You know, like the fan. You know, these normally would have been just black, right? There's our alternator, which looks really good with some clear red inside there, so that you can see those wires that these big Chryslers had. Um, little rear view mirrors. There's a lot of flash on this. Little side marker lights, I think. There's our stock hubcaps. That uh, turn signal tachometer lever thing that they got going on. There's our little side um, spotlights. So it does have a fair amount of police detail in it. It's just missing those two parts. Our license plate with 1960, that again is going back to the promo routes. So if you want this as a squad car from Illinois or something, you got to scrape those numbers out of there. 
There's our antenna going along there. More little police lights and mirrors. Um, oh, those are the little round domes for the flasher unit. And there's our hood-mounted siren going on there and a couple little teeny whip antennas. So let's just bring this up here. You can see a nice detail in that grill. And the headlights, of course, which are chrome. So you could add a little bit of a, a wash in there just to make them pop out a little. The hubcaps have some nice detail in them for being simplistic. Uh, not sure if the Plymouth logo, like on here, would have been on the hubcaps. Anyway, yeah, so nice work on here. The chrome is nice, actually, considering the flash and whatnot. Actually, not too much flash, just around on the bumper, which, of course, is really tough. Now, Johan didn't quite get all the chrome on here, and this is pretty blank underneath, so you could paint that off. Amazingly, they got it on the rear bumper. Anyway, there's our wheel backs. You can see the big hole in here. That's sort of typical. That will um, lock into the wheels. Oh, I actually didn't turn the pieces over, the yellow ones. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> so that of course is our chrome. And now let's take a look at our tires. So here we have our tires. And as you can tell, these are very generic, which is typical of Johan promos and whatnot of the era. They don't say Firestone, Goodyear, BF Goodrich, you know, any of those tire brands. They are basically blank. There is some nice tread detail on them though. It's uh, basically your straight lines, which were pretty much common on bias ply tires of the era, even into the bias belted era. There's a little bit of the, you know, the pie crust, pie plate type look on the sides. But basically these are simple. You could paint white walls in here if you want, but most police cruisers were basically the stripped down poor man version of the car from the factory. So these would have come in black wall tires. So, you know, even though they're generic, I'll still give them a nice good pass for being accurate. Finally, speaking of generic, <laughs> we have our decal sheet here, which has silk. This is silk screen right on a full out decal sheet. So this thing is entirely decal paper. It's very different from modern decals where, the, you know, you have the little sort of a pre-cut uh, frame around here, which when you get this wet, of course water slide transfers, right? So when you get this wet, the little decal film slips off nice and easy. That This is different. You actually have to go in and carefully cut right around here with your number 11 hobby blade. The nice sharp new blade, you know, you'd have to cut out along there and all that so that you don't get any of the decal, um, what do they call that now? You know, the ghosting or the the shadow. I can't remember the term. Just write it in the description down below if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, anyway, so you'd have one for the right and left hand side door, and like it says in the instructions, you have one going across your back tailgate. Now, what I want to do on my kit, on my build, is get some... We're up in Canada here, so I want to get some RCMP, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, decals from back in the day and mount them on my white doors. Now, you could use these on your car if you want, you know, for authenticity or the history of the kit, or you could actually replace them with modern de decals, not modern like, you know, 2020 police force, but, you know, modern as in a modern decal depicting an earlier police force. Uh, yeah. But that's how you can do it, or use those ones from the Joker Goon car, the Gotham City Police ones, you know, make a little Batman thing going on. But basically, these are simplistic decals, and again, not hard to put on. So just as a little bonus treat, I thought I'd show you my work in progress on my 1960 Plymouth wagon. Now, I got this thing back in the 90s as a kid, and I painted it up and glued it all together, um, you know, black and white kind of thing, but the paint job was not <laughs> the best since I think I painted it about 14 to 16 years old, you know. Now I'm 46, <laughs> so, man, time flies. Anyway, so what I've done here is I took it all apart, 
some parts got broken, you know, that kind of thing. But I've painted it in white primer because I'm, I'm going to have to paint this gloss white and then mask out around the doors. The hood is set in black for now, which of course will be done, sanded down and then painted as uh, gloss black. I'll just turn it on the side. I'll get some uh, front head on view pictures. Actually, before I do that, so you can see here that I've drilled out all the holes for the antenna in the back, the long whip one. These would be your spotlights and I do believe the little antennas go there. The siren on the front and of course our bubblegum lant going up top there. Just turning this up on its side and hoping everything doesn't go crash on me. <laughs> you can see I've added a bit of a black wash in here to make these hubcaps look more like a dog dish hubcaps which would be prototypical on your police cruiser. The tail lamps, I couldn't get them out so I just had to paint over them. I will be putting some chrome on here, bare metal foil or something, and then I'll paint the tail lamps with Tamiya clear red. You say Tamiya, I say Tamiya. Potato and potato, decal and decal. Anyway, <laughs> so there's our front grill. It kind of popped out a little bit. You see how nice that looks, just like the real Plymouth. Now originally I did the black wash when I was a kid, but I couldn't get it up in here. Now I have some brushes that will allow me to get in there, so I'll have to do that with maybe Citadel's Nuln Oil. In here I've got the gold on that emblem, which I didn't have as a kid. The headlights, I didn't bother putting the wash in there, pardon me. You can see the hood. There's Plymouth on there, which is very small lettering. I'm going to have to paint that chrome with my really tiny brush. Uh, let's just turn this upside down here. Lost my hood. <laughs> okay, oh, on the back of my grill here, I left a bit of uh, scraped off area so that this can glue together, but I painted it all flat black up top so that you can't see it when you open up the hood. I had to redo the axle because the original plastic ones snapped, so I've used some, was it 1 16th scale metal wire like AMT has? Just drilled out the holes and everything in here put it through. You can see the torsion bars fit nicely, the engine block. Painted it with a Humbrol aluminum under here for our automatic transmission. Wasn't really sure if I should paint that portion of it. Maybe I should. <laughs> We've got our steel on our exhaust and then back here little flat black uh, straps to hold this all down. So I mean like, like I said, it can paint up nicely. I didn't scrape off the uh, Johan logos and things on here just for authenticity's sake of the model. I'll just bring this the chassis up here so you can see the writing up top. Now let's just move the body out of the way just for a minute. So if I turn this over, you can see the engine in here. I did a lot of research onto the Chrysler colors and whatnot. Still not sure about that chrome air cleaner, but you know, back in the 60s, everything was chrome. <laughs> you can see our fan belts and stuff. What this lacks is the bracket for the alternator going on the engine block, which you could super detail in there, but you know, I kind of want to keep the kit as it is. Originally, I had my exhaust manifolds in steel, and then I did a little more research and found out Chrysler did not have these in steel. Uh, that's another portion of this. There's no pipes going from the actual manifolds into the exhaust pipes. And the exhaust pipes line up perfectly with these big torsion bars, which I don't think Chrysler had it quite like that. You know, they would have been over a little bit. But, of course, Johan is simplifying this quite a lot. The battery, I also researched that. So, sort of semi-gloss black with the caps on here in orange, which was uh, prototypical for Chrysler. So I also painted all under here with the satin black just so that it can't be seen from like the top through a window or something weird like that. So always remember if you're trying to get these kits to look really good, make sure you paint everywhere inside here except where your glue points are, of course, because you need this to glue together, right? Okay, so looking at our interior bucket. I want to paint steel in here. 
along the seats. I did find that online, I just haven't got around to it. Um, underneath our hood here, you can see it's not got any mold marks or sink things. I didn't get to show that to you underneath uh, when I was looking at the other kit. But again, it fits nice into the body. You know, there you go. <laughs> no gaps. Johan really had this nicely done. And then our rad support here, which was the radiator was glued in solid, so I'm not going to try to chisel that out. And then I've got other components, like our dashboard. Now, what you need to do here, which I found out, is you have to paint whoops, inside of your dashboard in the back, paint it all black. Black it right out. Because what happens here, like you can see the, whoops, a nice fit going into here. Just got to get the angle right. Okay, so what I'll have to do is paint black these out once I glue this all together. Scrape the paint out of here where it's going to connect. Glue our steering column back in. But what I noticed is there is a lot of gaps and whatnot in the engine bay. Our little firewall is very little. So it's not like more recent kits where it actually touches everywhere. It sits very preco precociously, I guess is the word, right there in our body. Oops. Up along the glass line. Uh, let's see here. So up in there. Now the problem is when you put this all together. Uh, how can I show this here? Getting pretty long at the end of the video. When you put this all together, it's basically sitting here. So the problem is when you have your hood open on your car, oops, there we go, you can see all the way inside all that. So what I discovered as a kid is I never painted the inside on the back of the dashboard. So you could see that bright, you know, funny butternut yellow color right when you open the hood. So that's my advice to everybody out there in model land. Paint the back of that dashboard. <laughs> you won't regret it. So, yeah. But overall, all together, you can see the, the nice fit and finish. So I'll assemble this back up and just take some pictures, and then we'll get to the end of the video. And that completes our look at the 1960 Johan Plymouth police emergency wagon. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that arresting video on our 1960 Plymouth police car. Actually, if you can find one of these and build it up, this would be really cool on a diorama that's set around 1960 and back because you could add in the AMT 1958 Plymouth, the Christine Plymouth. So that would be really interesting. Anyway, if you enjoyed these videos and want to see more of them, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it, and you never know what's coming up next. Could be more Johan, could be anything, could be something from ICM. Haven't done one of those? Well, we'll do one. <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you will enjoy it. Check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca And a big thank you to my friend John for loaning me a fresh one of these kits. Like I said, I built my own. I really wanted to review it. And he had one in the box. So anyway, until next time, everyone, keep cool 